In the heart of the North American Great Basin Desert in Nevada lies a cave that held a secret for millennia. This is Spirit Cave, a place that would one day challenge, and ultimately rewrite, the understanding of when humans first set foot on this continent. The story begins in 1940, when a husband and wife archaeological team, Sydney and Georgia Wheeler, working under the Nevada State Parks Commission, were surveying sites in the area primarily to protect them from the damaging effects of guano mining. As they explored Spirit Cave, they uncovered something extraordinary. Wrapped in meticulously crafted mats made of tool reeds, they found human remains. Among these was a partially mummified individual, the head and right shoulder remarkably preserved by the cave's arid environment. This was no ordinary burial. The individual, later determined to be an adult male in his 40s, was not only wrapped in tool matting, but also adorned with finely made lined moccasins and covered by a blanket woven from rabbit skins. Other woven fabrics were also present. The level of craftsmanship in these items hinted at a sophisticated culture, one with skills that wouldn't be seen again in the archaeological record of the region for thousands of years. The Wheelers, alongside local residents who assisted in the excavation, carefully recovered a total of 67 artifacts from the cave. They transported their findings to the Nevada State Museum in Carson City. At the time, carbon dating did not yet exist. Based on the initial analysis of the artifacts and the perceived level of cultural development they represented, researchers in 1940 estimated the age of the remains to be around 1,500 to 2,000 years old. A significant find, certainly, but one that fit neatly, if unspectacularly, into the existing understanding of North American prehistory. The remains were stored away, a report was filed, and for nearly 50 years, the Spirit Caveman, as he would come to be known, lay largely forgotten in the museum's collections until recently. To truly understand the world of the Spirit Caveman, let's go back 10 millennia. During his lifetime, the landscape of the Great Basin was dramatically different. Much of present-day Nevada was covered by the vast, ancient Lake Lahontan, a pluvial lake that was a remnant of the last ice age. The people who inhabited this region were not necessarily wanderers in a desert, but rather communities who thrived along the shores of this immense freshwater body. The lake and its surrounding wetlands provided abundant resources, fish, waterfowl, and diverse plant life, shaping the lifestyle of these early inhabitants. Their descendants would later farm and ranch this land. Now back to the cave discovery. Decades passed. The field of archaeology advanced, and with it, the tools available to unlock the secrets of the past. In the 1990s, researchers at the Nevada State Museum revisited their collections with new capabilities, specifically the burgeoning technique of accelerated mass spectrometry radiocarbon dating. They saw an opportunity to apply this more precise method to some of their older, undated finds. Among them was the partially mummified man from Spirit Cave. The results were astonishing. Instead of 2,000 years, the radiocarbon dating indicated an age of approximately 9,400 years before present, which, when calibrated, pushed the date back to over 10,600 calendar years ago. This finding instantly catapulted the Spirit Caveman from a relatively recent historical artifact to the oldest human remains ever discovered in North America. To put that into perspective, he lived more than 5,000 years before the construction of the Great Pyramids of Egypt and over 2,000 years before the famous Utsi, the Iceman of Europe. In fact, his age far surpasses that of any known mummy, including those from Egypt, South America, and beyond, making him the oldest human mummy ever discovered. This was a discovery of global significance, one that demanded a re-evaluation of the established timelines for human migration into the Americas. For many years, the prevailing scientific theory held that the first humans arrived in North America around 12,000 years ago, crossing a land bridge known as Berenia that connected Siberia to Alaska during the last ice age. These were believed to be the Clovis people, identified by their distinctive fluted projectile points. The age of the spirit caveman challenged this defined narrative. He was a contemporary, or perhaps even predated, the height of the Clovis culture. This discovery ignited intense scientific debate. Were there multiple waves of migration? Did people arrive earlier than previously thought, perhaps via a coastal route? Some even revived theories of potential transatlantic crossings from Europe much earlier. The scientific landscape of early America was suddenly far more complex and intriguing. But the story of the spirit caveman was not solely a scientific one. His discovery, and particularly the revelation of his immense age, placed him at the center of an emotional and legally complex battle. Spirit Cave is located on public land, meaning the Bureau of Land Management, BLM, had jurisdiction over the remains. As scientists pushed for further study, including advanced DNA testing, they were met with a counterclaim, the Fallon Paiute Shoshone tribe, whose ancestral lands encompassed the area around Spirit Cave, came forward to claim the Spirit Cave man as their ancestor. 
Their oral traditions spoke of a deep and continuous connection to this land, stretching back to time immemorial. To them, these were not just archaeological specimens, but the remains of a respected relative and kin whose final resting place had been disturbed. Under the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, NAGPRA, a federal law passed in 1990, museums and federal agencies are required to return Native American human remains and cultural items to culturally affiliated tribes. The Fallon Paiute Shoshone tribe, citing their ancestral ties and geographical connection to Spirit Cave, sought the repatriation of the Spirit Cave men. They expressed their strong belief that no testing, including DNA analysis, should be done, feeling it would be a desecration of their ancestor. This initiated a protracted legal and ethical struggle that lasted for two decades. Scientists argued for the invaluable knowledge that could be gained from studying such ancient remains, potentially revealing crucial details about the peopling of the Americas and the genetic history of its first inhabitants. They pointed to the physical characteristics of some early remains, which some scientists argued differed morphologically from modern Native Americans, suggesting a possible earlier unrelated population. By 2015, a breakthrough occurred. After years of negotiation and building trust, the Fallon Paiute Shoshone tribe agreed to allow one crucial test, a full genome sequencing of the spirit caveman's DNA. This delicate and complex task was undertaken by a team led by evolutionary geneticist Professor S. Quillerslev of the University of Cambridge and the University of Copenhagen. The results of the DNA analysis were conclusive and significant. The 10,600-year-old spirit caveman was, indeed, genetically related to present-day Native Americans. More specifically, the analysis showed a direct ancestral link to the Fallon Paiute Shoshone tribe. With the scientific evidence now aligning with the tribal claims, the legal path forward became clear. In 2016, the Bureau of Land Management officially repatriated the remains of the spirit caveman to the Fallon Paiute Shoshone tribe. Two years later, in 2018, the spirit caveman was finally laid to rest in a private ceremony conducted by the tribe, returning him to the earth from which he came millennia ago. The discovery of the spirit caveman did more than just add another ancient mummy to the archaeological record. He is more like North America's counterpart to Europe's famed Utzi the Iceman, a rare, preserved time capsule whose very existence forces us to confront a past that is far older, more complex, and more human than we ever imagined. But unlike Utzi, who helped reshape our understanding of Copper Age Europe, the spirit caveman did something even more seismic. He pushed back the origin story of an entire continent. For decades, the prevailing model of human migration into North America placed the first arrivals around 12,000 to 13,000 years ago. This narrative, long accepted as archaeological canon, framed indigenous presence in the Americas as relatively recent. The spirit caveman cracked that narrative open. At over 10,600 years old, his existence provides concrete, undeniable evidence of a deeply rooted human presence in what is now Nevada, during a period when ancient lakes still shimmered across the Great Basin and the megafauna of the Pleistocene had only recently vanished. His burial, deliberate, ceremonial, and crafted with expert hands, reveals a culture that was not merely surviving, but thriving, innovating, and carrying forward traditions. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an exploration into history's greatest enigmas. Drop a comment below. Do you think there are even older human remains still waiting to be found? Until next time, keep exploring.